Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing millennials and societal pressure. Surura um, Olayinka Ogunfemi is a family life engineer who works to optimize harmony, well-being, and stronger relationships in family. Olayinka is also a mental health first aid practitioner, a trained social sector manager, a purpose and potential discovery specialist, and author how to raise better behaved children now remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at plus tv africa or at ways africa one with the hashtag ways or you send us an sms or whatsapp to 0818038463 lami yes please before we bring um <laughs> olayinka back and shame back okay. wow you know the thing is i've always said it is what where we i think we have a problem is our mind Okay. Because everything that we are starts from the it mind. It starts from your mind. If you look at yourself and you do not see yourself as being accomplished, that is how it will be. Whatever you tell yourself, it's true. If you tell yourself that you're great, you're great. If you tell yourself that you are less than great, that is eventually what it will be. So I love when he said that what has been crippling us has been our thinking. I had to jot it down. More but than anything else. But don't forget the fact that, that's my personal opinion, I think quite a number of millennials are sheltered. They live a very sheltered life from childhood. So now in their adulthood, they do not have what the life skills that it takes to have a level of freedom, to have a level of self-reliance, and that kind of mindset that mm. I am good enough. If somebody doesn't, they are used to t people telling them from way from childhood, oh, you are good, oh, you're silly, oh, you're good, oh, you know, all those things have a direct effect. That's my personal opinion. Okay. So I think that people now, they need validity from every, from but third you parties. You don't, actually. You do need to validation what, to from think outside. Or you don't. Yeah, that's you why actually... a lot of people seek validation. Hmm. I think it's from the foundation of sheltered life. That's my personal opinion. And I stand to be corrected. I, 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 so for me, I think where the problem is, you know, for, for me, it still boils down to how you were raised, right? That's it, the foundation. Yeah, so yeah, it boils down to how you were raised. So that validation you're talking about, you know, sometimes it also did not happen in the home. So most times people are now looking for everything that seems to make it look like I'm successful, right? How do you mean? How, how so, are you tying it to the home? So the way I'm tying it is that you know, you've not been told that you're doing excellently well, you're, you're already a success and all of that from you, the comfort of your home. So you are now constantly looking for friends to validate you and to tell you that, yes, you're successful. And of course, they will not validate you with what you have intangible. They will validate you on with the, the tangible things. On the contrary. But I think we have... Um, okay. We have um, Olayinka with us and Sheung back. But let's talk to Olayinka first. Olayinka, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks for coming. So you are the family specialist, <laughs> family family engineer. <laughs> so um, if you want to say that. <laughs> so why do you think our um, the millennial today is under so much pressure? Wow. Uh, well, I think um, the answer is not too far fetched. Um, like I like to view them like as children, just the way they were children in previous generations. However, they're living in a different climate with its own unique influences. This is the era of so much information, internet, social media, and growing up with all of that and reality TV show is definitely not the same thing as you know you bumping into that in your 20s or 30s. I remember when we were growing up, TV wouldn't start till like 4 p.m. And even at that, it doesn't mean you'll be there at that 4 p.m. It's really regulated. But hey, for the millennium, the TV is 24-7. They, they, they have access to as much of it as they want. It's at the back and call. So yeah, that's it, it's a lot of pressure in itself. That's kind of make the climb they're living in now a lot different from the ones of our previous generations. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
do you think that, because earlier on before you connected to us, I was talking about how sheltered a lot of millennials are, which has affected um, our mental health. Do you think there's a direct link between how we were raised oh. and the mental health issue? Because taking in mind, putting in mind that there's a, the, the suicide rate has really, really exploded. You know, so what do you think is responsible for all this? Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, it's, I was still taking back to the, the decline which these children are being raised in, right? So that in, in, there's some form of pressure on its own. And, you know, like what do we see on the reality TV? Everything is like perfect, right? And so there's that constant desire to be perfect. And hey, you and I know that there's nothing like perfection. The only thing we can keep striving for is excellence. So there's a lot of pressure to be like the stars, the celebs out there and all of those things. And constantly, you know, you want to be like the Instagram model. You want to be like those you see on the TV and all of those things. And when you're not meeting up, you know, you can't really catch up with the Joneses. What happens? You begin to feel less of who you are and you depression, anxiety, begin to set in, and before you know it, it begins to have um, an effect on the, on, on, on the mental health of the millennium. And again, if you look at it, the millennials are in the period of um, instant gratification, right? So you put a post out there on social media, and if, yeah, you, you're selfie, look at the meal you're eating, look at the bag you just got off and all of those things, and you're having 50, 100 likes, and all of those things. So it's instant validation, right? So when, in the real life, they don't get that instant validation, what happens? They begin to feel that, oh, something is amiss, something is wrong, and then, you know, it begins to, and like, when they get those kind of validation out there, you know, the um, happy hormone in the brain, that the dopamine is released, right? And so, it, it becomes like the same pattern in the brain, like someone who is on drugs or alcohol or some other form of booster. And so when the effect of the dopamine wears out, what happens? You're back to your reality. And before you know it, you're having mental issues. And the, if you're not careful, you can start having um, suicidal tendencies because you that constant feel, that constant desire to be what you're not exactly in, uh, what you are not exactly in what will take a toll on your mental health. And that's why if you look at all the generation, the percentage of millennials are having depression and mental health issues far outweighs those of the generations before them. All right, so I, I want to come to Shewon for a bit now. Um... Because there is the reality, right? There is a social media space and there's the reality. And how do we get our young people to see that, come, this is social media. It's and everybody on social media would always, always project their best foot forward. They will never tell you the pain they went through, you know, getting all of those things. Of it's just It's just the highlight of their life, and they just, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they encapsulate it in such a beautiful package, and they post it on social media. And that is what we then now use to now put ourselves under undue pressure. Now, mm -hmm. pressure is a good thing. Pressure in itself, it's as an emotion, thing. is a very good thing, because pressure helps to keep you on your toes. Pressure brings out the best from you, you know, if you if, if there's no external pressure, you should even pressurize yourself to want to be the best version of you. It's a good thing. But when you now start Excessive. to yes, when you start to compare and you now look at somebody's perfect life that's on social media, and you now look at that and use that as a, a yastic, you know, how do we start to get millennials to see life as it is, not really so much of what they find on social media? Okay, so before I answer that question, I think there's also a reality that we need to put in place that is different, um, and it will help us to contextualize this whole thing. There's a reality that is different now. I love the way Simon Sinek puts it. Simon Sinek is uh, yeah, we'll a well-known uh, 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 management consultant, right? Um, he says it this way. You said, 
the generation before millennials will usually say millennials are lazy, millennials can't do X, and this is this is a Caucasian man. So it's not just it's not just about uh, uh, Nigeria or it's it's something that's like global. It's a global issue. But he said something. He said the generation before millennial tends to say millennials are over pampered, they're this and they're that. But you and then you throw them away. But we forget that we were the generation that raised them in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a there's a reason for us. There's there's a there's an argument for us to also take ownership of our failing. Right. Where some of us as Africans, we grew up, you know, seeing the advertisements. Yes, it was not as bad now, but it was just as bad then. So we bought every child. We bought our child BMX when we saw it on TV. We yes. saw Barbie doll. We bought it. We bought all those things. And because of um, our desire to give them what we thought was the best life mm -hmm. or the life that we never had. So we were, were part of the problem in the first place. So we need to really, first of all, will that uh, notion back, right, that um, we are, uh, the generation before us is better. No, the facts actually show that millennials have been high achievers. Most of the technology that you have today will not be possible without millennials. Without millennials, millennials are the ones that are feeling Silicon Valley. They're the ones in uh, YouTube, Facebook, they're the guys building this stuff. So I think that we need to be careful of painting the brush on an entire generation. It's not their fault that they have all the media as much and that they weren't brought up with the rules to control it. What we should start to do now is change the narrative. Now that we have more information as to how the chemical bodies react in our body, let's start, let's start to encourage them to do much more, right? Yes, social media will happen, but the trick is here. The trick is very simple. Put down that phone and go running, go and jog, go and do farming, do something, right? And then come back and post what you did. It's okay. But just keep doing what you need to do, right? Because you need the right dopamine. The reason why uh, some of us, there's a book I read uh, recently called Factfulness. And it's a really good book. I encourage everyone to read it. It talks about negativity bias that we have, right? Because we see it more does not mean that it's happening more. Suicide was as bad as back then. They just didn't have the media to post it. To project That's it, the yeah. <laughs> so we really need to put it in context and encourage the ones. There's some that, obviously, we have to pray for them from afar. They've lost it. They're carried away with social media. That's fine. But not everybody on social media does that. I spend a lot of time on social media, but I spend it doing the right thing. So... Um, I think it's not about spending less time on social media. It's about doing, uh, right um, uh, spending uh, more intentional time on social media. So do you agree with that, uh, Olayinka? <laughs> I kept, I kept oh, seeing you nodding. Really? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, do you want to on. add to no, that? I, I, I really can't agree less, yeah, with uh, what Shem has said. And the truth is that, yeah, in as much as, uh, as the exposed to lots of information and knowledge they are also able to do lots of stuff with those information and exposure and it's all about putting the right boundaries and limits so that you know everything is is um, balanced and there is no you know everything is in the right context they are having the right amount of um, social media exposure they need to project themselves and their work and you know what because hey this is a generation of people that are big on impact, right? And lots of them too, uh, you know, look at, we're having this life on Zoom now. If not for a millennial, this will probably not be possible. Absolutely. So yeah, I agree with Sean that it, it may not be um, in the right context to generalize the whole of that generation. Yeah, we can't say they're all lazy. We can't say they're all entitled. We can't say they're all um, self-centered, you know, however, there is need to put everything in context, to put limits and boundaries. And that's where we parents, we um, elders, the community comes in. So we can help them to understand what the real value is, to be able to turn around and look inward. And so that whatever they're putting out there is a manifestation from within and is not just um, on superficial level. All right. So 
I think before we wrap up, because there's a generation coming. Generation, there's y, generation y and generation, and generation Z. Z. <laughs> and we are in charge of those generations because it is our duty to raise them. Like Shewu mentioned, and Lami also mentioned, the generation before us. And I think you also mentioned that, Olayenka. So there's a generation Y and there's a generation Z. And we are in charge of those generations. Now, the, we are also under pressure to ensure that we get it right with those generations that are coming after us. Mm -hmm. So are we prepared for the, because our own, you think is bad. This one that I'm seeing. Ooh, I, I, mean, I was it, going to say that the parenting style is completely the, different. So millennials yeah, how prepared them. are we for the generation that is coming? So I'll just hear from Olayinka then. Shen, will you just take over as well? Well, to be honest, to be honest, we're not prepared as much as we need to be. You know, this is also a generation where both parents are out there for obvious reasons, right? So who is left at home to do the values education, to do the upbringing, to do, you know, all the validation and all the things the children need, the encouragement, the discipline, you know? What happens most of the time is because of the uh, absence, our uh, long absence from the children, we make it up with things that are also superficial with, in terms of gifts, in terms of treats and all of those things. And we actually leave the real values education. So there needs to be a turnaround from us as parents and, and the site as large to understand that the onus on, is on us to raise a value-based generation to go back to the basics and let us start living from the inside out and let so that the pressure can be can be reduced you know people need to know who they are and where they come in in the grand scheme of things and once we're able to take that inward journey we begin to realize that nothing at all is our fault but everything is our responsibility okay so quickly uh for show we have limited time just one minute you tell us how we are we prepared and what we should do right for the generation coming um, after us so i think we're not prepared um because even a lot of millennials don't know where the challenge is or where the opportunity is uh lying as well so what i would encourage is that uh first of all we need to get prepared the generation that is coming ahead of us is far far ten times faster in their thinking they're more emotional they're going to be more emotionally intelligent so you need to invest in their emotional intelligence more than your gifts that you're giving them the guys who will succeed in the next generation are emotionally intelligent kids not the ones that have all the toys that they can ever dream of wow I think we can wrap it up there. Thank totally you so much. I totally agree with you. Um, Shewun, thank you so much for your time. It's always fun when we're having time. I mean, when we're having fun, there's no time. Thank you so much, Shewun, for joining us this <laughs> evening. And thank you, Olayinka, as well, for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I thank think you. they've said it all. There's really nothing more to add. You know, we should just prepare for the next the generation that is coming because, trust me, Ah, every day is conversation that we are having, me and my children. Hmm. Honestly, I always call my children to like, yeah. you know what, we're that's having why, a conversation. That's where it should begin, you know? Yeah, thank the you. The conversations are very important. Absolutely. Keep talking, keep talking. Mm -hmm. All right, so please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as at Wage Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Just focus on making the next right move. You don't need to know where you'll end up. That's from Oprah Winfrey. Don't, don't feel pressure. Just do what you can and make sure you're doing the right things. Now, see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>